As you can see from the title, I'm going to make the game's main character, Viola, a 13 year old girl with fair skin and slender frame. Draculaura seemed to be the perfect match for this description. I removed the makeup with pure acetone, but nail polish remover will also do the job. Her hair also has to be cut off, but watch out for any vengeful teddy bears. Now with a bare face, I take off her head and remove all the leftover glued hair inside her head with a flathead screwdriver and pull them out with little pliers. Not mug pliers. To make her a bit more human, which is arguable, I try changing her body color. For that I prime the head and body with several layers of Mr. Super Clear first. I use pan pastel and red iron oxide tint. I keep layering sealant and powder until I'm satisfied with the skin tone. In the meantime, Viola found the glass slippers, which aren't the most comfortable shoes, so I had to give her a new pair of feet. Do you know the saying that your feet are killing you? Yeah, it's someone like that. I used a jewelry saw to cut off her feet and reattach them with epoxy sculpt. It's time to paint her face. I primed her face again so the paint wouldn't crack underneath in case me pushing the pencils too hard. Viola has big green eyes, which are mostly drawn with a deadpan expression. With that in mind, I tried to make her look as similar to the painting as possible, while trying not to make her into one. I start the sketch out with light brown pencils in case I make any mistakes. You know, light brown is easier to erase than black. To save my progress, I talk to the cat. Uh, I mean, spray her with sealant when my initial sketch is in place. Next, with a bluish green, I go and fill in her pupil. Choosing a darker brown eye depths to the eyebrows, lips, lashes, and the creases over her eye. Next I'm going to build the color around her cheeks. Although she's quite pale, she has some hue of pink on her cheeks that I just noticed because I stared quite long at her profile. With a white pencil, I highlight the top of the lips. Although I tried my best to make her lips seem very natural and small, all Monster High dolls have very luscious lips, which made that quite hard. After I was satisfied with her, I sprayed her one last time with Mr. Super Clear. I drew the highlight of her eye initially with gouache, but once I applied it, the color vanished. So don't do that, I guess. Second try of acrylics was much better. At the very last, I glossed her eyes and lips with Liquitex High Gloss Varnish and left it somewhere safe to dry. Since I rerouted a doll last time, I wanted to try making her a wig. Since the yarn weft method just didn't want to work for me, I decided last minute to go for synthetic hair. I got this hair extension thingies, which her mother found in a second hand store in the free grab box. Luckily, one was Elsa themed, so free blonde hair, yay! I tangled them, straightened them several times with hot water and lastly cut out the glue part, which I just couldn't get out. volunteer for the wig. Since I am a complete beginner in making wigs, I popped open one of Anastasia Customs videos on wig making and it seemed so easy and simple. The thing was a catastrophe and it just looked like something parasitic would live on her head. 
I got so frustrated that I just wanted to throw it all away. After being annoyed for one day, I completely restarted the wig. Made a wig cap, made wefts and glued everything onto the head after each strand had dried. And it worked. Like oh my god, it really worked. I already braided the hair, but the fringe just didn't want to stay down, so I had to pour boiling water over the head five times and even bind it down with a string. But hey, everything survived at the end. The only thing left now is a stubborn fringe on which I spent an hour to properly cut. I hesitantly cut millimeter for millimeter, constantly checking if the fringe was the correct length. Then I start cutting her hair to make it more accurate to her image. I know, I could have used styling gel for this part, but I just didn't have any on hand, so that seemed to be the easier method. All this trial and error, time for a snack. Back to these crude looking feet. They will be covered up by socks anyway, so no need to color them properly. Her shoes were quite a bit of work, since I found near to no reference material. So I did a little detective work. Considering the style of clothing and the architecture of the house, I'd put the game into Western Europe between 700 and 1900s. Certainly not later. The very little official art that exists shows some kind of brown boots, but the manga makes them flat. So I decided to make the manga version. I took these patches, which I actually used to hide ribs and jeans, because they had rough leather-like texture. I wanted them to look like worn shoes of a peasant or townsfolk. So I cut out a square that covers the front of the foot as well as the tip of the toes. Then I wrapped them in plastic. I pinned the square to the foot onto a styrofoam piece. I pinned them as close to the foot as possible. Then I cut in the tongue of the shoe. Looks pretty neat, right? To maintain the form, I covered the patch with Mod Podge and let it dry overnight. For the back side of the shoe, I cut a wider square and check if it fits. Make always sure there is enough fabric left to fold under the foot. This part is optional, but I cut two rounded pieces out of the square to make the shoe look like more like the shoe I'm referencing. Then I do the same to the square patch, pin it to the foot of the doll and douse it in Mod Podge. Just make sure the first part is already completely dried, otherwise it won't be able to dry at all. For the middle sole I just eyeball a piece of thick paper. Then I cut the excess around to be able to fold it in better. It should look like this when you're finished. Put the middle sole onto the foot, fold in the excess fabric and glue it to the sole. I made the actual sole of the shoe out of epoxy sculpt because epoxy has a certain weight to it when it dries and so the doll wouldn't need a stand. Then to the fun part. In all depictions the shoes seem quite dark so I paint them with acrylic paints in the proper color. I paint two layers of reddish brown as a basis and then dry brush them with a darker brown. I even gave them a few blood stains, you know, because how wouldn't she have them? Now to her accessories. 
The must-haves of this season are a small candy-colored dust bottle with a cute design, like for perfume or despair, a trendy wristwatch that emphasizes black hollowed out eyes on flaming red skin of the wearer, and the trustworthy Ellen's knife, which unlocks the true ending of the game and seeing misery and despair on the player while finding out that the lovely girl you were playing is actually the evil witch who switched bodies with Viola to trap her inside the house because of her own horrendous demeanor. Boy, these accessories get more intricate with season! So for the knife I draw a sketch of the knife, which on the side note looks like a carving knife, at the size that I want it to be for the doll. Cut it out and trace it onto a piece of thicker plastic, like doll packaging. Then I take a cardboard piece and draw the size of the handles on it. Then I glue everything together. Finding a proper picture that shows the knife is also quite a challenge. With acrylics I painted the knife. And now to the pet. Every self-respecting doll has a pet, right? And do you know which is the best pet? That one that doesn't hold a grudge against you when you forcibly feed it to an enormous snake. Oh. Uh. As I said, best pet. I kinda lost the footage for how I made the clothes, like in, I forgot to turn on the camera. But anyways, since this game takes place in the early modern ages, I thought an underskirt for the actual dress would be a fitting touch. During the game she wears a marine blue dress with a purple seam line at the end. I sew a zipper at the back to make it easier for me to dress her. The most important part of the dress is the white apron that covers her dress completely but ends just above her chest. I parted the ribbon and bow into two separate parts, which are both stitched onto the doll. And here we go, let's enter the witch's house. This doll included a lot of firsts for me, like making a wig, making tiny weapons, customizing a tiny toy, making shoes and so on. I'm really pleased how she came out in the end. And if you want to know why I gave Viola the frog and not the cat, I'm just gonna say the cat is reserved for someone else. I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, subscribe and turn on the notification. Oh who knows, maybe the witch will come back because she needs a new body. <laughs> well then, see you next video. Ciao ciao!